So this is uh, this is a big meeting for you and me. I'm so excited because <laughs> it's time to tackle this. We do so many experimental airplanes, and now we want to like pateize the Pilatus. Okay, it's happening. Everybody, stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody, you calm down. Yeah. So this Pilatus has been on our field since brand new. Yeah, since 2001, and it's been owned by either one of our best friends or business partners since the start and now it's completely ours no partners just it's the payday plane it's the payday plane <laughs> so a lot of people ask well what does the 22 lima papa stand for yeah so there's a couple things if you look it up 22 most important there's three primary but one of them stands for twins yep the other is adaptability and prosperity so we love the number 22 that works good uh, the Lima Papa, there's two ways you could look at that. It could, it could be Let's Prosper, which is pretty good. The twins, Let's Prosper. I, I think it's Let's Party. So there you go. <laughs> let's Prosper and Let's Party. Ain't no party like a Scranton party because a Scranton party don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, first thing is speed mods. There's several speed mods, but the biggest thing, of course, there's prop. There's a cowling that we want to do some testing on. Several different props we need to test on. Power. But the horsepower is the big one. <laughs> Pratt and Whitney. Pratt and Whitney, we need your P model. I want that. Super awesome 67 P model variant. This has um, a different earlier series engine. The P model just came out. It is wicked awesome. Higher, hotter, faster. Yep. So let's and change then, the motor. So we're going to change the motor. Um, uh, there's two companies that have got STCs in the works. Chris Spinoff. Their SDC is done to put the motor in. And uh, Blackhawk is another great company. They're working on one. But we're going with Finoff with this one. We'll kind of let I, you follow I, through the swap and see how it goes. The good, bad, ugly, how the install works. I, we'll try to keep I, you updated. I got to tell you, we'll, give, we'll give you updates about the progress because it's just fun. Airplanes are cool and modifying them is cooler. But I got to tell you, um, meeting Chris. I like can't imagine there being any problems and the ones that do arise, I can't imagine he isn't gonna just jump right on it. That guy is like such a nice guy. He's yeah. like, I, it was like, do we, are we really gonna make the jump to this big motor? Yeah. And then you meet this guy and you're like, I, I just wanna get whatever he has to offer. And he's, he's been, such a genuinely And he's been nice involved guy. in the PC-12 from the very start. So, so we're gonna do that. The P model, if you're not familiar, the new Platus NGs, um, have a faster cruise, a faster time to climb because they have that P-model motor. So we're going to put the P-model motor in here, which will add a little bit of weight. But the legacy platuses like this one are significantly less weight than the NGs. We're seeing a few hundred pounds. We'll get into numbers as we go through the project. But that'll be the big thing. What, it's, what after that? Uh, well, we definitely want to get avionics is probably the next most important thing because <laughs> I, I go like this avionics first engine first no, oh my gosh so i'm all about speed and horsepower she knew it was gonna be engine for me but um we've been flying platys for so many years i my first class i ever flew was this one 20 years ago right nearly 20 years ago and uh i love it so platys has just just killed it we love the plane um Unfortunately, and I can only think it's because it just wasn't available, um, I, I'm a Garmin fan. Everyone knows I'm a Garmin fan, but I think a lot of people in aviation are, and Garmin just, I've tried the earlier Platus, I've tried the mid-series upgraded Platus, I've tried the most recent Platus, and, and uh, I'm sorry, it's Garmin all the way for me, so it doesn't matter what year, make, or model, I, I want an all Garmin glass panel, so we've got to go Garmin glass. Well, the good news is um, there's been Garmin in these. Uh, you can upgrade to the 750, 650 from the old 530. Which this one had. Which this one has. But now you can get the 750, 650 Xi. You can get the new G600 um, uh, for the, your primary flight displays. Um, we're going to try to fit in some others. But just recently, they came out with the EIS. So now we can have engine information because we've seen these with the 600s in it, but with the old the old engine information. Yep. So now with the Garmin information, we can push to all of them. And now they've just recently got the autopilot. You can put oh, the Garmin yeah. autopilot in here, replace all the servos, which will save a lot of weight. And yeah. it's going to make a big difference on how it flies. So. Yes, yeah, so Garmin's integration to their autopilots, unbelievable. So I'm super excited about that. 
Have we, is there many planes with all those components together yet? This will be the first one. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, but I so want to be hurry because I want to be first. Like we, we, we <laughs> then we'll uh, tell you if it didn't go good uh, or if it went uh, good. But I let's be first. There's at least one with the Garmin EIS in it. I know there's one, at least one with the Garmin autopilot in it. But this, as, as far as I know, will be the first and only so far or at today's date of the new autopilot, the EIS, and all the Garmin information. So, um, so we'll get that done. Of course, got to do interiors. Probably the cheapest part of this, and we'll get that done. And then we're gonna have to pick someone to paint it. And that's going to be a challenge too, because we've got several good companies to choose from. This is the current paint. That is, that's our airplane. And it's it's beautiful, but it is a little tired. Yeah, it looks so. it's, it looks perfect from twenty feet, <laughs> or at least from two thousand <laughs> feet when it flies over. It flies by. Great. It looks absolutely it looks fantastic. amazing. So it's a little tired. It's it's twenty years tired. So uh, let's do uh, interior and paint at the same time. I want I want to brand it for best tux. No doubt, we're gonna to have to put best tugs like real big, like on the side here, or on the tail, or something. on the belly, or we'll come up with. We gotta get best tugs on it. So, okay. So, your thoughts are, and and I agree. Is engine. engine first, avionics, avionics paint, paint, and then and interior. interior at the same whenever, time whenever we, we get it done. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Well, well take a big gulp twice. Let's break open the piggy banks and get to work. <laughs> Love it. Oh, this is a strange one. Wait, who are you? A platypus? Barry the platypus? Well, this is uh, like any big project. Before you undo anything, you inventory. And last thing I want to do is take a perfectly good flying airplane, put it on the ground, and get started, and then find out I have something I didn't uh, have in the box or in the kit that I needed to order that's going to be three or four weeks out and have a torn apart airplane. So um, I know we're going to miss stuff, but we're sure trying to go through it hard. So this is the start of it. I've got more tables on the other side of the shop and we're just itemizing every little part and component and going through and make sure we've got everything and all the paperwork to go with it so we can have good logbook entries. Wazowski, you didn't file your paperwork last night. Oh, that darn paperwork. Wouldn't it be easier if it all just blew away? But this is a lot of work. I'd say so far in ordering parts, finding part numbers, getting them here, it's probably, oh, eight to 12 hours of work. Did you sleep okay last night? Great. I got a full 40 minutes. Um probably ways to shorten that down but um you know some part numbers you're like this part number doesn't pull up anywhere and you find out well that's a Pilatus part number but it's an old part number or, or whatever it's um there's always something but at least eight at least eight hours of uh prep in getting parts coming and i got a bunch more parts coming so but uh here we go i'll keep at it i'll try to keep tabs of the hours as we go too on what it really takes to do an engine like this. And I've got uh, two certified uh, mechanics uh, overseeing the project. Of course, you know, Mike and I, we wanna be involved in everything. Um, we kind of have a philosophy when building airplanes. It's uh, when in doubt, throw it out. You know, always replace with new. And if it doesn't look right, stop. And we just, Maybe we're control freaks, I don't know. But we like to have our eyes on everything. And so, especially with an STC like this, it's gonna be really fun to kind of see how it's done and why they did it. And, you know, if any improvements could be done, if anything, um, that still uh, is legal within the parameters of the installation. So, here we go. Lots of work to do. And so it begins. This engine has done almost 7,000 hours of taking really good care of this airplane. About, uh, well, maybe 400 hours before it's due for an overhaul. It would be its second overhaul there every 3,500 hours. But we decided to pull it early because we got that. Well, we've started and uh, I think it's a good start the first day. Uh, with all the preparation we did, and ordering parts and making sure everything would be here uh, so that we could just start and never stop. Like any project, you start realizing, oh shoot, 
we need these crushed gaskets and these, you know, spacers and these new bolts we want to replace. We're not going to reuse the old ones. And so we did miss a few things. So um, tomorrow morning, start next day airing a bunch of other little random stuff. But all in all, so far, no big, huge problems. Just uh, a lot of work. The hardest part, I think, is always like any project, getting started. And the second hardest part is sticking at it. So here we go. Seven hours later. So with uh, two experts um, and me uh, as, a, as a redneck helper, um, we've got uh, first day underway, a little bit short day today. Um, we started at 9 o'clock and uh, stopped at 4 o'clock. We didn't really stop for lunch break. but uh, So that's what we're into it so far. And this is what we got done. Obviously, the props off and all the parts of the county that need to be off and exhaust and um, a lot of hoses and brackets and still a lot to go. But that's our first day in, and we'll just keep plugging along. All right, so there's several big changes to the going to the Papa motor, besides just the horsepower. One of those is you get another alternator or another generator. The standard Pilatus has a starter generator and an alternator that sits right here. When you go to the Papa motor, it's got another accessory pad and you get rid of this pulley and this mount here and you get two uh, generators. So you get a lot more power um, you know, a lot better redundancy, but because of that, you need more cooling for it. So normally you have this NACA scoop right here, which we've just removed. That would go to a wide, it has a large tube to go to the starter generator and a small cooling tube to the alternator. But now we've gonna put this much larger one in and this has this new Y on it. So when that's installed, we'll trim this out a lot bigger. That'll give us the more airflow we need. And then inside the plane, you've got two large cooling ports for your two generators. So um, it seems scary cutting a hole into your platus, but most of you did this conversion, you're not doing it. Some other guy's doing it when you don't have to watch. It's much less painful if you don't have to see it happen. But they will absolutely just cut holes into your beautiful paint job and install something that you will be glad you have later. That's dual generators. So there's a few things about this install that were a lot more work than I would have imagined. One is the, the, the significance of the changes to the electrical system, um, not in their complexity, but the level of work that's required to change the electrical to go from a starter generator and an alternator to a starter generator and another generator. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad! So um, we're going from about 120 amps, I believe, on the, the old alternator to 300 amps on the new generator. So you got a lot bigger wire. That means pulling the entire interior out, pulling the floorboards out, the pilot seats, the bathroom, the cabinets, carpet. I mean, ripping everything out. Um, huge job, but uh, I had my son, Case, and uh, here working with me in the two A&Ps we got here. And... Um, Kaysen got that done in about an hour and 50 minutes. But then there's other things like this. This was a, a big change. This was the old mounting plate that held our primary contactors and fuses there on the firewall. But now you're going from a small contactor like this, which was the alternator, to something twice that size for the generator. And so there's just not enough room on that plate. And so there's more to go on. So this is the old plate and here's the new plate. And as you can see, it's a little dirty, but there's a lot of nut plates and drilling and it, it comes with the plate, but you've got to lay all that out. And then you've also got to uh, build all the mounts on the firewall. So you can see these green tabs here on the firewall. There's four of them. Um, and you have to match all those and drill them and mount them. But the electrical surprised me. Sometimes you think the real big deal is this here, that engine. Now this is the new engine and we're just about done installing all this. Everything you see here had to get pulled off the old engine and transferred to this new engine. Of course, all this baffling 
Um, you know, the fire, the fire detection wire, we still got to finish routing that. Um, so there's uh, two guys in about two days so far on transferring everything on the engine. Part of that was the last bit getting the engine uh, out of the airplane. We had an engine mount that was stuck. I mean, stuck, stuck. What am I doing up here? I'm stuck. How'd you get on the roof? What am I doing, an interview? Shut up and get a ladder or something. This bolt right here would not come out. And when the engine's there and it's surrounded by everything, you can't hardly get to it. And then we have somewhere around here, the top half of the engine mount. And there was also two bolts stuck in there. We, we actually had to machine tools of our own making to get into impossible places to get out bolts that were just stuck and they weren't rusted. There was a yellow, I forget what it's called, but it's a, it's a material that now you can't use anymore because it causes cancer. But there's a yellow glue, uh, a yellow, here it is. Hey, come on over here with me. So uh, this yellow crap right here, all that, I dropped some bolts. Where it? Watch it, watch it, watch it. There it is, got it, I know where it is. Okay, so uh, that junk right there just acted like a glue. And it causes cancer in more than one state, not just California. So uh, we actually take it seriously. So that was a nightmare. We actually destroyed two of those bolts and a couple washers. So we gotta get those replaced. And luckily we got replacement stuff here. So but that was a big deal. All right, uh, lots more to do, back to work. That's my brother Mike saying. Are you mocking me? Are you mocking me? Stop it, you just didn't do it again. He's trying to copy me. Uh, back to playing with airplanes. That doesn't work. Ta-ta for now. Nope. Giddy up. No, no, no. How do you end it? You guess you just end it. Bob's your uncle. Ford's better than Chevy. Oh, wait. Oh, that's controversial. No, 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 no. That's the scariest part always right there. We just slowly lowering the new engine into place and making sure we don't cut any wires or pinch anything or dent anything. Oh, but it went smooth. So it's time to start putting bolts and holes. Hey. All right, so the plane's pretty torn apart right now, but despite how it looks, it's really, really close to being done. Like button it up tomorrow and do tests. But a lot of work has been done. You know, a lot of it's pulling out old wires. We we did some uh, changes while we had the plane apart. We added USB power ports. We had some for charging phones, but we wanted to switch out to the Garmin because they can handle the larger iPads and not just maintain battery, but charge the iPad while you're using the iPad. So we swapped out the Garmin on both sides. Um, we also tore out more interior than we had to because this is a new antenna wire. We put an iridium antenna on the roof of the plane so that our air text system can send and receive signal just with a perfect signal. It worked really well with the antenna up here in the window, um, but it didn't look good. I didn't like it. Sometimes it slide off the shelf and unstick the Velcro and, and mostly it just looked bad. But now we've got the iridium antenna on the roof so we can do air text and emails um, with just a perfect signal all the time. But uh, this install of this engine does require all this interior to come out. There's some significant changes. All these floorboards had to come out because we had to bring in a lot larger wire back into the main connections under this floorboard. And the reason for that, of course, is because instead of one generator, starter generator, and an alternator, we now have two generators. So two 300 amp generators. So obviously the uh, wires coming off that little backup alternator wasn't going to cut it. So there was also a, a service bulletin. So it's not a required, it wasn't an AD, but a service bulletin to take the ground wire that was coming off that alternator and pull it out from being connected here and install it up here on the firewall. And um, it didn't need to be done, but for me to get rid of 12 feet of wire um, and then just the new larger wire just being a two foot run instead of a run all the way back under here. Awesome service bolts. And if you care about weight, if you're doing updates in your plane, just get that service bulletin done. Take out a few pounds of the airplane. Every ounce counts. So um, then this thing, uh, this is your switch panel that goes up in here. One of the things the STC did really well, you have your generator one here 
and on, and then you have your reset here. Well, your Gen 2 was just an alternator, so it didn't have a reset. So instead of trying to redo this whole thing, um, they added a reset button right up here, and we'll show it to you later, but it's just a little push reset button for the generator two. So instead of this push down, you have a nice little lit switch here for resetting that. Pull the lever, crunk. Run lever! Another big change was this here. This is the easiest change though. This is your engine monitor. Eventually this will be Garmin, hopefully sooner than later. But this will come out. Um, we pulled this out, it took two minutes or a minute and a half and that half second half minute of that was finding the screwdriver right so that comes out you just unplug it you send it in they put all the new parameters on it in in a couple days and send it back so now it has the higher torque and and mainly your higher temps and is all configured now for the new engine parameters so that was the easiest part was pulling that out sending it out and having it done um a couple of things I noticed, I was a little disappointed in. This is a service message to um, the service centers uh, out there. I I love my airplane, and um, I, I don't want to say everything has to be perfect, perfect, but but I do expect a level of per perfection at, at some extent. This particular plane has only been serviced at two service centers. They have great reputations. They're great people. They've taken really good care of this airplane since it was new. Um, but I, I was really disappointed when we're pulling the plane apart and, you know, almost all the screws in the floor panel are completely stripped out. Um, you know, if an annual inspection averages, say, $35,000 on an airplane like this, and to replace every screw that was kind of stripped out with a brand new screw w w would be $8.00 in screws and and zero extra time and possibly even save time because you're not trying to put stripped screws back in but i would argue 90 percent of the screws in this plane uh, in the floorboards need to be replaced and i'm not going to throw those two service centers under the bus you guys do a great job but just talk to your your guys in the shop and say guys if someone's going to spend thirty-five thousand to a hundred thousand a year on us maintaining their airplanes, we absolutely will give them twenty dollars in free screws so that they don't pull their carpet up someday and go, "I'm drilling out strip screws because they kept putting them back in." And it's it's obviously this happened over time. It wasn't one screw; they just got a little worse, a little worse, a little worse. People stick them in the little plastic baggies, and then they just you know, label them, which is great, but then they just stuck them all back in the plane. Don't do that. Love us, love us enough. Take our money, take all of our money, because we love our plane, but put good screws in. Are you yawning <sighs> in the middle of this while I'm breaking it down? Huh? Did you hear what I said? Stop listening after you said we need a plan. I think I think that's a, a good idea, and I'll love you more. And I, I love you, and I don't know how to say that any nicer. We love you. Like, but do better. So um, that was it. The other thing, we've pulled quite a bit of weight out of this airplane. I'll show you the parts. We used to have a little switch here that's going to have to be covered now. Um, the Airwave um, internet, all we really used it for was text messaging and light emails. It wasn't really fast. We personally weren't happy with it. A lot of people really are. Um, but we pulled that out and it was a ton of weight. And I'm anal when we take out equipment. I don't let them terminate the wires and leave them. That's how planes get heavy. People, as we age, we get heavy. Airplanes shouldn't. As they age and new parts get lighter, the planes should get lighter. But unfortunately, planes generally get big, huge looms of wire everywhere just left in it and it, they get heavier and heavier. But not this one. This plane, we have found lots of unnecessary wires as we've removed um old equipment and like the the ADF is coming out on this. I don't listen to the radio on that anymore like we used to. I have XM radio. I'm just not going to try to tune into the old stuff. So tons of wires, tons of equipment out. Um, I think that's probably it on the inside of the changes that happen here. The added switch, the added wires, some changes on the circuit breakers and panel. This thing swapped out. You'll notice a big huge hole right here. This was just something that needed to be done. Our altimeter, we noticed the last few flights, um, 
uh, always was a little bit off. When we landed, we'd look at FlightAware, and if we were flying at 28,000 feet um, on FlightAware, it showed 28,100. If we were at 24,000 feet, FlightAware showed us at 24,100, and I talked to ATC um, on a flight and said, hey, I'm at 28,000 level. What do you show? And they're like, oh, you're showing 28 and bouncing, or, or you're showing 100 foot high and sometimes bouncing to normal. So that's gone. That's going to get fixed. I, I, I want it to be accurate, um, like really accurate. So that's it. Uh, it's sad to see the airplane in this state, but it's going back together with all new screws. It's going back together with some significant weight savings. It's going back together with new Garmin USB ports so I can charge iPads while using them. And it's going back together with an Iridium antenna for my AirTech system for super cheap and affordable uh, texting and email. So that's it. There's the update for today. All right, we're getting close to the finish line, which is always really exciting. So I figured to go over some of the big changes to the airplane that had to be made. Uh, this, of course, the NACA scoop, the old one. This old one was much smaller. You need a, a bigger one. I've got this in primer and sanded out and then painted it in just black to keep the turbine oil out of it uh, until I can get to a paint shop and have it fully down. But I wanted that turbine oil soaking into the, to the uh, primer. So that's just a protective coat, but it looks okay for now. I can fly it like that. Um, uh, that feeds two larger scoops because we have a second uh, generator now. We used to just have the one generator and a small alternator here. Now we've got another generator, which adds a lot more wiring. All the wires in white are all new. This whole bundle's new, another relay. So those are the big changes there, but all that electrical changes heads all the way into the plane. In fact, there's some new breakers added here. Normally there's three, there's a couple more, and then a lot inside the plane as well. The other big changes um, is your prop um, has to be a prop off of an NG Pilatus, or you gotta take your prop and send it in to get uh, shot pinged. And that hardens the outside layer of the prop, lets you handle a little bit more horsepower, so that's a change. So if you're gonna do this mod, you might go to a five blade prop. I chose to stick with a four blade, a lot less money. And uh, we got this one off of an NG Pilatus. It's already been shot peened and good to go. So other changes, we did some weight savings. So excuse the mess, but this is the way projects are. But we took all of this stuff out. It's an old internet system that I felt like was too heavy. And then all this wiring that went with it, and that adds up a lot of weight. Um, the other things over here, we pulled out the entertainment system. So all this came out, and this was really, I always thought radios were light, but by the time you get this shelf in there and the power converter, power supply, that's pretty heavy. And then I just don't listen to CDs anymore. I don't need the CD player uh, rack for storage. We have XM for entertainment and we have Bluetooth on our audio panel. So we're playing our own playlist or XM. So this just had to go. And then we pulled all the wires related to it to get them out. Because I think airplanes should always be on a diet, except horsepower. That engine does weigh more than the original engine. I think that's partly in the gearbox because it's handling more horsepower, which is why it can handle the full power of 1200 horsepower all the way through the climb instead of a five minute uh, limitation and then maybe the fins add, but that weight, when you put that engine, when you weigh it, it's, it is heavier. So it is not, some people would say that the Bravo motor and the Papa motor are just basically the same, but different documentation. And that's not true at all. There is significant difference. They're the same footprint. They look the same on the outside, but when you put them on a scale, that's a heavier motor. So we pulled weight out here. We pulled weight out there. We cleaned up a lot of things on the inside to save some weight and add a little bit on the engine so i guess it's like trim the fat and wait for horsepower uh that's okay and you know muscle weighs more than fat so trimming fat adding power Rawr. it's uh excited we might start this today so this is it like we're actually gonna pull this thing out and run it for the first time and honestly it it it's kind of unnerving the first time you start an airplane after major surgery and Replacing an engine and changing the electrical system, I, I would call that major surgery. How are we doing over there? We're good, how are we doing over there? So, 
I mean, this is a big deal. I'm excited. Okay, we all clear? All clear. So, should be up all the way. Yeah, I, uh, the only part about this, all these tests, that isn't stressful is uh, the tug I'm using. <laughs> it's easy and cheating. So, there we go. Let's, uh, let's fire this airplane up. Wish us luck. So it's, uh, it's now months later and we've been flying this plane like crazy. And I have to say, overall, I'm super, super happy. But the thing I'm most excited about is something I never would have guessed, I never thought of. Um, I'm almost embarrassed I didn't think of, but the very, very best part about the engine upgrade, I gotta save till later. 